Hello Internet, I am the Hero of Julios once again with another One Piece card game video. So just to clarify, this is the second video I've done on the One Piece card game. I'm trying to figure out exactly what the card game's rules are going to be, mostly because they haven't officially released the rules, nor have they really officially released a lot of cards. We see a lot of card art, but only enough to finally start making some speculations. Other channels have talked about it, but I wanted to give my perspective since the One Piece card game is being made by the same people who make the Digimon card game. Granted, the only other card game I'm exclusively familiar with is Yu-Gi-Oh, but I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh in quite some time. But without further ado, let's talk about the leader cards to start things off. So. The way the starter decks are presented is you get 50 cards, plus a leader card, plus 10 additional Dawn cards. These Dawn cards I'll get to in a moment, but the leader card seems to be the capstone of your deck, the most important part of it. I don't, I don't know how else to word it, save for the captain of the ship. A while after the initial announcement of the card game, the One Piece card game Twitter released this image of a board state. Uh, you can see Luffy and the Straw Hat crew versus Crocodile and Baroque Works. My guess is Crocodile is the leader card of the Warlords deck, as it's called, but because we can see Mr. Two is in the trash bin and Mr. One is on the board, I think the more accurate name to give this starter deck would be the Baroque Works starter deck. Perhaps Boa Hancock, Gecko Moria, they may show up in this booster pack, or maybe a couple of their minions, just to pad out the number of minions involved. But for the most part, we know it's Crocodile, and we know Luffy is the leader of the Straw Hats. This also means that Eustace Kid is probably the leader of the Worst Generation starter deck, and Kaido is obviously going to be the captain slash leader card of the Beast Pirates deck. Another thing I'd like to point out is that uh, the leader card seems to just sit there. It's separate from the rest of the deck. I don't know if it's necessarily a card you have to draw into, or if maybe it's guaranteed to be in your starting hand, but unlike all the other cards presented so far, at least the ones on this board state, Luffy doesn't seem to have a play cost, neither does Crocodile. So maybe it's just guaranteed at the start of the game and your opponent will just know what kind of deck you're playing at the start? Regardless though, my theory for the leader cards themselves is that A, they will be indestructible, and B, their effect, while simplistic, will be the main catalyst to all the other effects in your deck. Sort of like how in the Digimon card game, a red deck primarily focuses on putting all your eggs in one basket and having a, a devastating blow to your opponent's security, while purple is more reliant on using your trash bin to bring cards back into the game. You can also see from this board state, in the top right corner and the bottom left corner, there are some log poses with some numbers on them. One has three and the other has five. My guess is, also like the Digimon card game, this is kind of your security stack. Once these five cards are gone, the next attack directly towards you wins the game. Is the Straw Hat deck just really good at defending itself, or does it focus a lot on recovery by bringing those cards back up to full strength? We're not exactly sure yet, but I think it's safe to assume that the card game company that made the Digimon card game would also have very similar mechanics in the One Piece card game as well. You can also see at the very top of the screen and the bottom of the screen, uh, Crocodile's cards have a 5 out of 6 Dawns left, while the Luffy side has 5 out of 6. However, the little symbol used for the word Dawn is also located on Luffy. Luffy's current power level is 5,000. However, the card that was shown to us by the One Piece card game website the Luffy card only has 4,000 power. You gotta squint your eyes a bit to see it, but you can see on the One Piece card game website there are two cards that both have similar effects on them, saying your turn plus 1,000. One card is perfectly blank and just says Dawn on it, while the other one depicts a Luffy as he's stretching his arms and declaring, you know, he's off to go be King of the Pirates, you know, having Ace, or not Ace, Sabo looking down on him, and, you know, getting ready to leave Windmill Village. 
What's cool about this is the Dawn cards, which are a separate deck of 10 from your deck of 50, are probably going to depict different scenes straight out of the manga. We're talking panels and everything. Which means, since everyone's going to have Dawn cards and they all look like they're going to do the exact same thing, it's totally cosmetic as to what cards you want to choose from. Meaning, every time you face off against someone, the Dawn cards they pick, if they have all the Dawn cards to choose from, are probably going to be their top 10 favorite moments in One Piece. Personally, I'm probably going to have the Going Mary's Funeral, and uh, probably when Luffy punched the Celestial Dragon, that's a really cool moment. Maybe when Nami asked Luffy for help, that's another great one. Uh, hmm. Maybe I'll do a top 10 Dawn cards I'd like to see in One Piece. We'll, we'll see about those. Regardless, though, what I'd like to get at is one of those Dawn cards is no longer among the six that you have available. My reason for pointing this out is there doesn't seem to be something along the lines of a memory gauge in the One Piece card game. Instead, I think they're taking a page out of Magic the Gathering, where land cards serve as your mana cost to play different cards. The Chopper card and the Zoro card you see on the board have little play costs up in the corner, as well as this Yamato card that the One Piece Twitter released. My guess is, at the start of your turn, you will draw a Dawn card from your Dawn deck and place it on the battle area. Then, you can suspend that Dawn card by turning it sideways and using it to pay for whatever abilities, you know, or cards or, you know, minions, whatever you want to play to the board. But, what may be the more interesting reason for the Dawn card's existence and the plus 1000 power is we have the power to trade our mana curve for power. So, in the example provided by the Twitter account, we can see that we have five out of six Dawn cards, our opponent has six out of six, but our Luffy card has an additional thousand power. So maybe you can take your Dawn cards and just give them to your individual pirates, powering them up and allowing them to get over the enemy. However, until that pirate is destroyed or defeated or sent to the Shadow Realm, you lose out on that mana. So we can't play a six cost card, but our opponent can. This becomes even more interesting near, you know, mid to end game where you're at 10 Dawn cards and you can give Luffy to all 10 of them, making him a 14,000 power wrecking ball. But you have no cards you can play anymore unless they cost zero. The next thing I'd like to bring attention here is this card art of Zoro, Law, and Sabo. As you can see, Sabo and Zoro are both red cards and Law is green. Now we know the four starter decks have uh, Luffy's, you know, Straw Hat crew are red, uh, the New World Pirates are green, the Beast Pirates are purple, and then uh, blue seems to be the color for the Warlord starter deck. What's interesting about this is there is a color wheel located at the bottom of these three cards. Zoro and Sabo's are the same, Laws is different. This could give a hint that maybe there are six different colors. I don't know why a wheel is needed unless it's to symbolize multiple different colors or multiple different factions that these things belong to. But if the four starter decks are the four different colors, then perhaps the next or the last two colors might be black and yellow, as similar to the Digimon card game as well. In addition to this, I'm probably going to guess that the middle part of the circle is to depict white cards. Or perhaps all slots will be filled in for white cards. Or maybe multicolor cards will have different slots filled. And you could have anywhere between a single color card and then a full color wheel of a rainbow card. Again, it's a little early to be guessing all this, but with the first booster pack coming out alongside the starter decks, well, a little bit after the starter decks, it's fun to speculate on this sort of thing. Speaking of the first booster, I would like to bring attention to Amazon of Japan's website for the pre-order of the first booster pack. It says there's going to be six cards in a pack, plus one uh, card that like just has you keep track of all the different cards available. Much like the booster pack of the Digimon card game, which also has six cards per pack, I'm guessing us Americans are going to get 12 cards in a pack per booster. 
Another thing I would like to draw attention to is the remarkable similar numbers to the first booster pack of Digimon cards. We got, I uh, have it written down here, uh, 45 commons, 30 uncommon, 26 rares, 10 super rares, 2 secret rares, and 8 leader cards. Again, like I've said before, the leader card seems to be an irreplaceable part of your deck, so it might be that these leader cards can be swapped out, or, you know, you have to choose one at the start of the game. But, you know, if it's two for each of the four starting colors, then maybe the second booster pack will bring yellow and black cards into the game. Finally, this one image we have of another Luffy card, my guess is an alternate art to the starter deck Luffy card that we have available to us. Unless this is a different Luffy entirely and is one of the cards that is going to be featured in the first booster pack. Having two Luffys to choose from might be a little bit early, but it's never stopped this card game before. There was an Agumon in the starter deck, the Gaia Red starter deck for Digimon, as well as an Agumon in the first booster pack for Digimon. So I would say this could be an alternate art or it could be a completely different Luffy entirely. It's still too early to tell. So there you have it. That's, that's kind of my prediction for how the card game goes. At the start of your turn, you get a Dawn card, and then that's your mana for how you want to play your next card. And you have five security, like the Digimon card game. My only question is, how do the colors relegate anything? Does your leader determine what kind of color you're allowed to play? If I have Luffy, the red card, as my leader, am I not allowed to play Law because he's green? Or Yamato because she's green? It's still too early because they just haven't told us the rules yet, but we're only two or three months away from the One Piece card game being released in Japan, so I would expect sometime in the next month to get the official rules for the game. Until then, this was fun, this was nice to predict. I'm looking forward to the game. I get more and more excited the more and more I learn about it. I just figured I finally had enough information to actually say something in regards to the game instead of just a 5 or 10 minute video talking about one single card art every time I hear something new. But as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. This is the Hero of Julios, Xing out.